All right, cool. Well, um, welcome everybody. We'll get going here. Um, thanks for thanks for popping in. Thanks for joining our very first uh, uh, do drop in of the year. Um, and uh, originally, I thought our first do drop in would be next week, but um, I uh, I remember that our wonderful uh, colleagues are here out on the islands. I'm like, hey, you guys, you want to do the first do drop? And they're like, okay. And so this is a this is a uh, 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 rapid spin. And so, um, Andrew and Dylan are both kind enough to say, sure, we could do that because it's not dinner time quite yet on the Island. So, um, so welcome everybody. So going to introduce these guys in a second, but first, let me just say, um, our do drop ins are for everybody. So, um, you're welcome to, um, ask whatever questions you want, um, for the first 10 minutes or so, I'll just talk to these guys and, and sort of get sort of the lay of the land and get some of the basics and then open it up. And if you guys have questions, great. If you want to say hi, great. And then, um, and, and that's it. So this is really about a conversation. This is really about just having fun, talk about cool ESRM topics and things like that. Um, but outside of our typical classroom and not in the form of a test or lecture or anything like that, but just sort of hear from cool people doing cool things. So, so awesome. So thanks you guys, so welcome. Um, so with that, I'd like to welcome our, our two guests tonight, our, our, two, stu our two ESRM uh, illustrious students. Uh, Dylan and Andrew. Now these guys are are like all of you. They're they're undergrads in our program, but rather than being here physically uh, on our uh, campus uh, this semester, this fall semester, they are out at Catalina Island at a facility run by the University of Southern California, the Wrigley Marine Science Center. Although the name changes every few years, so is that the current <laughs> name we're using, you guys? Is yeah, I guys? believe so. Correct. Okay. Uh, so, so um, uh, doing a fantastic program that the, that the California State University system has been doing collaboratively for several decades now, and so they're uh, getting regular, taking regular classes, regular regular classes that apply to the towards their degree, um, and they just transfers um, different. We rotate in terms of different campuses that run this program, and so so depending on who's running it, you might. Um, you might get credits from Cal State Long Beach or Cal State Northridge or what have you, but but they all transfer and it's and it's uh, very easy to do. It's just like you you took a summer school class at a at another college or something like that. So it's just a little teeny uh, piece of paper you fill out to get them transferred, and it's great. They're taught by our fellow uh, CSU faculty, and just like you all have a but but because they're out remotely on this on this island instead of taking a class since they're they're out there for the whole time as we'll hear in a second. Um, they have a series of classes, so it's an entire semester that's been put together that makes a, a fantastic experience. And so um, with that little bit of, of intro, um, Andrew and Dylan, tell us about what, so tell us, uh, give us an orientation. So so uh, when did you first get to the island? Uh, so what is this, week three? Yeah, it was on August 25th, yeah. I believe, yeah. Um, a, I think that was a Monday. I it feels, it. feels like six months ago. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's been nonstop. The The program started about three weeks ago and we still have like, I, I think it's like four months and how it's structured right now is that we're doing three classes, uh, but where they're compressed into four weeks. So it's like, it feels like a summer class, but even more so because I mean, there's nothing that they they really take advantage of the opportunities you have around here, which is yeah. if we're by the code, we'd like to show it to you. But Big Fisherman's Cove is like this wonderful place to do science where we're just snorkeling and doing all these things all day. So. Yeah, a lot of snorkeling. The first week it was like lecture in the morning, snorkel in the afternoon. And with all that, even though it's a lot, it doesn't feel like a lot because it's all fun. So yes. it's yes. like- Oh, that's good. Oh, yeah. it doesn't feel like work. That's excellent. It doesn't feel like work, no. We, so. uh, <laughs> I was talking to a lot of the other kids in the program and when we first got here, we we're like, wow, it feels a lot more like summer camp than it does like a school semester. So, but there is work though. So yes. <laughs> the academic knob is getting slowly turned up. <laughs> it's slowly turned up. Yeah. Awesome. So for people that don't know, so I'm gonna get out of the way here. So this is, you guys, if you look at my background, you see this is Catalina Island. So LA, the mainland is, is, um, uh, above this, uh, uh, uh to like the North part of this map. And so if you if anybody's been to Catalina, you've probably been to the big city, Avalon, which is over here. These guys are over. So this little pinch point here called the Isthmus, 
This little place right here is called Big Fisherman's Cove, and this is where these guys are talking to us from tonight. So they're at they're at this end of the island, um, which is the less visited island. Uh, um, a fewer people are there, and and much less infrastructure, so it's much more natural. People sail boats over there and stuff, but people. Um, you can come out here to camp and there there are some limited facilities but this is really more of like sort of oceanic camper side of the island rather than the uh, urbanized uh, part there's of a island. small general store one restaurant one bar like restaurant bar together and then that's that's pretty much it yeah excellent okay so now so so tell us so so you guys are um how, you have was it four classes you guys will ultimately uh, take yeah, it's it's three academic classes, and then we do our own independent research project. So right yeah, what now, are the what are of, the three classes? Uh, the three classes are ecology, marine fishes. Uh, it's then going to be I I forget the the actual invertebrate term. zoology. I, yeah, invertebrate zoology, and it's going to be more of a phylogeny class, like really dissecting and learning inverts. And then the last one is marine ecology, marine ecology yeah. and just general, but we don't exactly know the details of that one. I think it's his first time maybe teaching the class as well. So. Cool. And so you guys take, so it's academic class, academic class, academic class sequentially. Yeah. So it's not all yeah. every single day. So you several weeks of concentrating on this one topic and then several weeks of this. And then at the end, you guys get to pick uh, whatever floats your boat. If you guys are into invertebrates, if you're into physiology, if you're into behavioral, occult, whatever it is, um, pollution monitoring, whatever, then you guys propose a project and your, your last several weeks, that's your independent um, research project, correct? That is correct. It's like a mini capstone for yeah. people who are in capstone right now and definitely in the same processes. And, and so you guys are, um, so then for our students that might be interested in doing this, so you guys are, uh, both of you are, tell us about your scuba related stuff. Mm. So it was actually like a year ago that you brought my uh, brought to my attention in one of these zoo drops, the uh, MOTC and AAUS. Wow, that's very meta. That's hyper meta. So meta. <laughs> so meta. Uh, um, and so in order to do underwater science, which they have like a whole, you know, they have all these tanks you can use. So you can do all this, like, you know, academic scuba diving. Um, but in order to do that, you need to get the uh, AAUS uh, certification, which is the mm -hmm. American Academy of Underwater Sciences. Mm -hmm. Um, and that was a two week course. One week was in Long Beach down at uh, Southern California Marine Institute. And then the other week was actually here. Um, and it's like a pr kind of like a little scuba boot camp where they teach you a whole bunch of different things. You get your advanced scuba, your rescue diver scuba, scuba certification, um, teach you how to do transects and stuff underwater yeah, like the dan like some diving safety stuff a bunch of stuff like yeah. all the certifications and i think that's more that our what our DO, dso requires but uh, a lot of it is very useful and if you're into the thing with like resume building and like cv building i'd say it's very helpful yeah if you have any interest in scuba diving um as for a career in marine science that's that's what you got to do um I, I will say we haven't, just because uh, the DSO has to like approve us and uh, it's part, part of it is us, part of it is him, but not saying it's like him, but he, <laughs> it's just right now, he was on vacation. So we're still in the works of getting in the water. So we haven't been like, in the water yet. However, as soon as we get that, like those certifications you mean for the class in the water, for diving class. for the class, for, for scuba, yeah. correct. We've been in the water plenty. But that to add on to that, though, this class does offer those like facilities if you do want to dive. So yeah. I think there's four divers in the class right now. Coincidentally, none of them have their, their stuff all tied together. But as soon as they do, uh, we'll be able to do the class activities. But then we'll also get to do it while scuba diving, which gives us yes. dives. Totally. And we get to log our science dives and give us more time in the water. Which yeah. Is super cool. Very exciting. Yeah, it's awesome. And so, and so, uh, so for people that might be interested in this, you guys get your open water one, which is what you would get at a, at a dive shop and sort of any, any dive, uh, uh, certification place. And then, then you can take this class and these guys took it just before the class. They took it the summer, just before the start of the, the fall semester. Right. Um, but if you are, I don't know if you're not into scuba diving or whatever, as these guys just mentioned, there's, you can still do the semester. Um, you just would be restricted to say snorkeling and swimming and stuff like that. You can still participate fully, 
but um, you maybe get the most bang for your buck if you are are interested in um, going underwater for more extended periods of time with diving. So it's it's great. And, and we've we've gotten some donor money to help us if you guys are needing to borrow equipment, things of that nature that we can um, help support you guys uh, with that here at CSUCI. Um, so awesome. Okay, so that, that's all going great. What about your fellow students? So where are your other students um, uh, hailing from in your class? So I'd say uh, in terms of the program, and I think this is a historical trend, there's, there's one particular university that kind of has the majority of the people who come from it, and that's Cal State Long Beach. So at the current moment, there's 16 Cal State Long Beach people. No, sorry, 15. Then there's two Northridge, us, so we're Channel Islands, and then there's one person from Monterey Bay. Yeah. Oh, cool. Oh, good. From Monterey. Excellent. Excellent. Because I think typically it's... Uh, at least historically, it's mostly a Northridge and Long Beach program, but anyone, so even like people up in Humboldt, Cal State Humboldt can come down. Yeah, yeah and that's because they, because we we rotate who is the instruct, who are the instructors, and those are the historic main homes, uh, uh, or the most common um, instructor pools flip-flop usually between Northridge and, and Long Beach historically. So that's great. So anybody can take this. And and just like these experiences, you know, I really encourage you, I think these guys really encourage you guys, anybody listening to this, um, you know, we have these experiences for you all when you're students with us, take advantage of them. I mean, I know they seem kind of scary at times and they maybe seem kind of expensive or whatever. You get so much out of it. And, and so even these guys that have just been in here for a month, tell me, tell us some of the funky things you guys never would have thought you would have done just in the last something in the last few weeks. Let you go first. Well, I don't know. For one, let me get started. The food here is a hot topic. We talk about I expected the food here to be, you know. So the USC hamburgers and hot dogs every night. It's it's like we're having steak. We're having meatball subs one night. One night it's coconut curry. It's like just fantastic. And uh, yeah, every time, every meal we have, we're like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Um, I don't know what was the question. <laughs> no, that's good. So, so to be clear, these you guys are living in dorms. This is a full yes. lab, full marine lab with seawater, everything, microscopes, everything. Yeah dive facilities, an emergency hyperbaric chamber if somebody be sick, helicopter yes. port. Um, these guys are talking to us from their dorm room and they have a full cafeteria, giant cafeteria. And that's what they're talking about. So, the, so they don't do any cooking um, or, or you don't have to do any cooking when, when you're there. So the yeah. food's great. What else? So tell us something else that was surprising or you couldn't believe with your experience so far. Uh, for me, what was like, I don't know, kind of eye-opening is that going into like, especially Channel Islands, I've always wanted to do like environmental science and I, we do have an emphasis on like that part of it, but I feel like we focus a lot on policy and like looking at like environmental science and resource management. That's the major. I'd say if you're someone who like really wants to do like community population biology, where you're getting out there and like studying like organisms, this is a fantastic opportunity 100 percent. and it's because all we're doing and because the program is built from a marine biology program in like csun and so what we're doing like for ecology of marine fishes is just taking transects doing studies looking at behavioral like ecology of fish and i feel like that opportunity was like amazing to me we got to go on the yellowfin the rv yellowfin which is like this big ship that the csus have and we did otter trolls which is a troll that is like super deep in the water and we got to see fish i've never seen before and i i like fishing yeah. it's like fish from 900 feet deep that's why i've yeah. never seen them <laughs> so it's super cool pop some swim bladders and exciting yep. like that yeah yep. that's cool that's cool yep um yeah it's been great uh mark Steele, um he our professor he just described it as marine biology boot camp and i feel like that's pretty that's pretty true it's it's like you know, you're living here, you're completely focused on school pretty much the entire time. And it's like, it never stops in, in a great way. Um, I feel like I'm fully, fully immersed in getting like such a unique experience, different from living at home and taking classes, Totally. Um, especially with just taking one class at a time. It's like, you know, all your attention's on that. And it's, it's great. That's awesome. And yeah. for full disclosure, so people know, so when I was an undergrad, like you guys, and first started volunteering in a lab, uh, I was Mark's uh, like first assistant guy under, under, I was his grunt that would go, not in a class context, but as his research assistant. And then I, for many years, I was uh, 
his uh, underwater dive uh, slave, as it were. Um, so yeah, so there, there's a lot of continuity here, a lot of continuity. How about, um, before I open up to a question for everybody, how about one last question I wanna ask? So now that you guys have uh, making friends with all these great students from other campuses, and that's awesome, that's super cool. That's another, the community is another fantastic part of this experience that you get to have. How would you say, um, uh, you know, your preparation for, for this uh, course, this experience um, sort of susses out relative to maybe some of your friends and, and how like, like their preparation before they came out to the island? Like yeah. how, how, their, how their programs are preparing them or, or how, you, how our program compares, that kind of stuff. So what I will say, just because we've only touched on one thing so far, and it's all just been the marine ecology of fish. So everything's mm -hmm. fish related. And so you did you take the fisheries class? I did. And you said it was, here you can go. Was that like really helpful? Yeah, I took the, the fish and fisheries class with the other Dr. Steele. <laughs> Claire Steele. Yeah, and, and uh, she's on the line right now. Yes. It's a steel <laughs> fest. It's a steel fest. Um, and I feel like, especially taking that right before this class, that, that was like super helpful. So much of that information was very relevant to what we're learning now. But what I think is a benefit to us, and it's kind of like, it goes into that discussion that like people have with like general education. I feel like we as like, just general naturalists in a sense have a much broader education so we have like geology or like oceanography and all these things and i feel like it's not as touched on inside like their curriculum because it's mm -hmm. purely just marine biology so i think that does help us yes although the only because we are i feel prepared i yeah. will say though like some people when it gets into the nuts and bolts of like fish or like you know specifically the marine ecology right right they, they've taken a bit more rigorous than us. Totally. It's, they teach you, and it's not like you're missing out on stuff. I yeah. feel it's very much easily learned, and that's the point of it. If anything, it's just a review for them, and it just makes the test easier. So. Cool. Awesome. Well, I could ask these guys questions forever, but why don't um, – I think it's about time that I uh, ask if any of you all want to ask uh, – uh, these guys, any questions? Uh, uh, Claire, uh, if you guys just unmute, and if you guys can come on camera, that'd be great, just so we can we can see your face. But um, yeah, Claire, go for it. Hey, I'm sorry I'm driving right now, but um, I'm really happy to hear it's going well for you guys. I've taught some of these field-based classes, and it's super fun um, and really immersive, like you say. One of the questions I wanted to ask is, what do you, are there, is there any skills that you're learning that you think are going to be good, like if you're going into jobs based in conservation or marine stuff? Yeah. Uh, so my first instinct on that is that at least coming out of like doing caps and all that stuff, and this also goes to, like the kind of project you're working on. I feel like I had a bigger emphasis on like GIS and stuff like this, but I feel like the reliance on R and like using different like statistics, statistics and modeling uh, with all these resources here and all the students who have taken like more rigorous courses, I feel like it really is benefiting me and like making my art skills better, which is definitely going to help in the long run because going into it, I was not that, I don't know what I'm doing, but now I was able to make a bunch of like ANOVA statistic models, all these things and like run the tests and make the regressions. Yeah. Cool. That was uh eco statistics was one of the criteria to do this. And that was really beneficial. I think it's definitely going to serve long in our futures because with with capstone it's like you have so much time to do the project uh here it's like crunch time that kind of force it's like almost like trial through fire oh yeah so if you if you don't do it then you're gonna get a bad grade and not much that i care about the grade i think it's really valuable experience to like learn and it's yeah. kind of simulating real world like yeah we need to write this paper you need to collect this data we need to run this experiments and honestly like the well so far it's only been one faculty member but he's been amazing so, <laughs> so yeah so this past week you we can just... tell the truth it's okay if he's being a jerk you can tell me no he's great he's great <laughs> all, all he talks about is goby yeah <laughs> yeah you got, he has goby on the mind did he tell you he has a goby named after him did he, did he how many how how many yes. minutes into the conversation was it before he said that it was pretty quick i think that that comes up about once each lecture yes <laughs> excellent <laughs> Uh, but yeah, this past week we did like fish transects and our, we, they compiled the uh, entire group's um, data. And it's so, like now, right now we're doing a little, our own like mini research project on that independently. 
So uh, it's a good little taste of, I think, what's and about to come. While we're doing that, we're now having to look at fish and then monitor them so we can make our behavioral yes. study. Yes. So. There's a lot going on simultaneously. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Love it. Uh, anybody else have another question or anybody wondering anything else about uh, these guys' experience? No. Everybody's just flabbergasted. How about this? How about- I, I actually, I want to clarify um, the, what, what was the, so you said that we don't have to get our um, scuba certification for the class, but we would mainly just be, that would determine how long we're underwater, right? Yeah. yeah if, if you do, if like, so a lot of times like these guys would do a fish project or like an invertebrate project. And if you don't have your scuba, you could just snorkel to do it. Whereas if you have your scuba certification, you could go deeper and, and work on critters, you know, farther underwater. And, Got it. And then what was the name of this class? So this is the class that we're doing specifically is just uh, ecology of marine fishes. But this whole program is the CSU Catalina semester. Yeah, I think you can find it. I, so the, I think the programs run under the CSUs, but I believe if you go to SCMI, or the Southern California Marine Institute. I mean, maybe Dr. A could probably find a link. Yeah, I'll, I'll toss in the in the chat, you guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that'll be perfect. I, but uh, they have the whole sign up. And I remember when, because I was super interested in it last fall. Uh, and this, I know the application comes up in spring. And once you find it, uh, the whole website will get updated because right now it's in the 2024 mode. So yeah. uh, it'll like say, we're taking ap applications. It's not, I wouldn't say it's too rigorous. Uh, you definitely have to do like, like a some like a paragraph answer some questions, but compared to say like some internships out there, you're not like doing all these crazy cover letters or yeah. like a resume and stuff like that. But it's, it's accessible. The application process for me was like a little nerve wracking. There was a lot of back and forth. There's a lot of stuff you had to do, um, but in the end, it's worth it. I can tell this is like going to be one of the greatest experiences of my life. It's already fantastic. I'm having a great time. I was so nervous before I did this. Coming into it, I was like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I can do this. Like, I don't know what it's going to be like. Is it going to be really hard? It's fantastic. I'm having such a good time. I think that's a shared experience. Everyone here is just so wonderful. And I think just all on the same page of um, very marine science focused. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a great environment. It's a great place to be. It's great, full of resources. And one more thing to add on to that is because uh, I know this is like important to some people because they hear like we're working remotely. Uh, and I don't know if people were here early when Dr. Barry was saying he was on here for like a year, like straight they do give you the opportunity. I think it's a benefit to stay on the island. But if you want to, you can even, depending on the professor, you can come back like every weekend even. Yeah. So like in terms of taxing, if you want to be with family, something's happening. You can think of it almost like you're taking a bus to go to school on Monday, but that bus is a boat to Catalina. Yes. Yes. <laughs> they, have a, they have a boat that runs every single day, Monday through Friday, I believe. Yeah. Um. So you're not... You're not stuck out here. If you need to go into town, you know, it's a 30 minute walk. It's a nice walk, but yeah, you're not far from, you're not far from civilization. And I preference so that super just, isolating. So it doesn't scare people off because then when you get here, you're not going to want to leave. Yes. <laughs> so that's how it's going to be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. And, and, uh, and Dr. Steele is just uh, making a note about roadmaps. And so, you know, if, the, if you guys want to do this, all you need to do is come see us or actually you'd probably now uh, this semester, you'd see Dr. Reineman because he's our advisor, but you could just talk to one of our faculty advisors, or if you're another major, you could talk to your uh, major, uh, your departmental um, advisor and just say, hey, I would like to do this experience. And either these classes that these guys are taking can either count towards one of your, uh, uh, you know, uh, if it makes sense with your major, um, would, it would with the SRM, it would with biology, you know, there's some natural fits. We could just swap it out for one of our other requirements, which we just do with a simple form, or you can use these as upper division electives. So almost, you know, certainly almost all the sciences, if your major, you know, ESRM or, or chemistry or something like that would probably let you use these, but you just want to check with your, um, with your, uh, advisor beforehand. The only, the only hiccup this would cause us an ESRM is if you guys were trying to do this your senior year and graduate your senior year because we have our capstone requirement. So that would be a bit hard. So so it's best for us to be best to do it in like your junior year or your, your the fall of your junior year or if you guys stayed maybe, you know, a fifth year or one more semester to do it then. I would strong even though 
you know, we're all forgetting you guys graduated as soon as possible. It's totally worth staying one more semester. Even if you finished all your other ESRM classes or your other major classes, stay. This is a really unique experience and a really unique opportunity. So, but either way, we could make it work, uh, you know, in some way, shape or form. You just want to talk with your advisors um, uh, before you uh, get out in the, uh, uh, before you, you know, do the full, full thing so we can make sure it transfers correctly. Really quick, I, I just want to say that this is tacking on a semester of my graduation. Um, and I have no regrets. I was so nervous about doing it. And I'm just, I'm, you know, the experience is completely worth it. So plus with the independent research project, you can always use that and try to turn it. Yeah. Maybe add on to it in capstone as well. Yeah. yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You could start a project out there that is, is your capstone or continue it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think that could be really compatible with, with doing it in your junior years that basically you collect your data in the Catalina fall semester. And then the following year you have that in your pocket to go, or you, or at least you have the experience of, of already, you know, totally. doing independent research. So I think that could be really helpful. Yeah. I think at the very least the experience, it will help with capstone a hundred percent. Yeah. Awesome. Other questions, other people have comments or, or, or things you're wondering about the Catalina semester or these guys experience. I guess I, I did want to throw on one thing was like affordability, because I know that was like a big thing that I was worried about. And when it current turns, like you can get even like coasts and places like this can like uh, send you money and funding to do like the program. However, when it comes to it, if you're thinking like, especially nowadays with how expensive I feel like housing can be, the amount of value you're getting and how much we're paying for like what if, comparatively could be rent up in like Ventura is crazy. Yeah. It's like, I think like it's a normal CSU semester that you're paying for. So it's the exact, like the exact same price. And then housing and like the program was just housing basically is like 3000, I think 700. Yeah. And that's for like four months, which if you break that down into rent like per month, but like for the experience, it seems daunting, but I feel like it's, more affordable than what it might seem and it includes food too and it includes yeah. food and you don't have to shop you don't have to think about what you want to make you don't have to cook it yourself you just show up you eat this delicious food and it's taken care of yeah and it adds so much time to your day there's no driving <laughs> you wake up you're right here in the yeah. study site uh you don't have to worry about making food you don't have to like do that you show up get your meal it's like increase my productivity like crazy. It's so much yeah and so that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, I um, want to throw that point in there because I do think it's like more, I was way more affordable. Also touching back on what you said about like cool stuff that we didn't think we'd see. When we first got here in the first week, there was a whole bunch of people from the NASA dive team mm -hmm. and they're out right off the dock assembling. Everyone kept calling it the moon base, but it's like um, mock underwater simulation of some type of, international space station moon base cool uh, so they're just setting that up and i believe this month uh some astronauts are going to come out in train yeah next week the astronauts are literally coming yeah so, and I, I, <laughs> one of them is is johnny kim who was like a navy seal then he was a doctor now he's an astronaut so Same. yeah really really excited for that experience because we're going to be living across the the walkway from them sweet that's Although awesome. we get bumped down the ladder, so yeah. Oh, <laughs> and Andrew and we were, were out. Ugh, we were out snorkeling, and Andrew spotted a massive, giant sea bass. Yeah. Ooh, cool. Yeah, huge. Like, not Ooh. a baby, but an actual adult. Yeah, yeah. a huge. I thought it was a, a white shark when I first saw it. I was like, oh my gosh. Plus, this is this is one aspect we didn't talk about, but I, I know there's some bureaucracy with the with the the boats right now, mm. but. If you get your MSB license, which yeah. you can get before the program, uh, me and Dylan are both boat operators. So that means as long as it's framed within research purposes, because so that could be like, we go out there, do a transect. We then can have the boat and do other stuff on the boat if you want. Yes. Uh, and that, I mean, we're obviously going to be doing research, but just being able to drive the boats and go out to these locations is like, and not have to worry about like the funding. Yeah, um, it's like in in the MOTC. I don't think we paid for the MOTC. Is no, the MOTC is MOTC also is free. If, free. If you're gonna do the Catalina semester, definitely do the MOTC, and if you can, do the AAUS. So do the do the boating and the scuba diving. The boating is 100 percent worth it. 
Um, you could even like, if you get in contact with Dale, like who is our DSO and like our boating safety officer, you could get your MOTC for like free right now if you do the right class. It's just like a one week uh, commitment. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> yes, we were supposed to run one of those. Um, there's been some disagreement as to how we could get that done, but it's, it's a fantastic <laughs> opportunity. I'm glad you guys are getting that, um, getting that certification. That's great. Um, uh, I had a question here about uh, who do we talk to about this? So the instructors wrote the lead campus rotates each each um, year. And so I don't know if we've identified the next the person for next year. Or so but in the next couple months, the uh, I'll have posters out in front of my office, we'll have some posters around. And that will that will point you to like these guys said, once the once this class ends, and they update the website for next year, the, the main contact person you guys can reach out to in between you can come talk to me or Dr. Steele. Um, if you guys want to talk about questions about general questions, but the specific stuff won't be um, loaded up until this particular class of uh, finishes. If you guys are looking for the person that does the um, boat training and the diving training that's our our. Um, uh, diving safety officer and his contact is on the website and I, I can um, same thing I'll put I'll drop that in the chat. But um, but there isn't there isn't currently there isn't there isn't a permanent person that always is the one to talk to about this class it'll rotate. But again, in the intervening period, you can come see Dr Steele or me, if you guys have questions um, as you're as you're thinking about it debating. debating. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good other questions people might have for us. Or for these guys. Is there something that you haven't had a chance to do yet and you're really excited to do while you're out on Catalina? Yes. <laughs> um, I haven't gone spear fishing yet and I'm dying to get out there. I haven't gone to Cat Harbor. I want to go fishing. Yeah. Oh, we yeah. Both, we yeah. both have a strong desire to do a multitude of types of fishing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Especially because so Cat Harbor, where, where we are is like it's Twin Harbors. So there's like the pinch. So right now we're on like the... Uh, the wind protected side cat harbor is on the other side of the island yeah uh, but you can fish there you can actually take stuff because that's the if we're going to say one downside it's not even a downside because it's wonderful it's an mpa and it's been protected for 70 years uh, uh, not everybody maybe knows what an mpa stands for so oh, yeah. an mpa is a marine protected area and so this is a no take mpa which means you can't no fishing yeah. nothing you can't take seashells nothing that that's the one, but it, it's a beautiful thing. But it would be so convenient if you just go fishing down at that dock. Yeah. And so, <laughs> so nice. what's great about this place being an MPA is we go out snorkeling and you see uh, a diversity of fishes that you don't often see in Southern California. And you see the size of fishes is it, it, amazing. I'm seeing like you go out and you'll see kelp bass if you go scuba uh, snorkeling off of like Malibu. But here the kelp bass are four times the size of anything you'll see out there it's mm -hmm. it's amazing and the behavior is different because they're not there's no you know pressure from fishing it's they just of, sit there it's like a come right up to shot you. of like what i imagined uh like our waters would have been yeah and if the fish weren't scared of like humans and right. the other thing though is that there's so the amount of biodiversity is crazy too yeah. at least i feel like if you're in the water long enough you'll be able to find some of these species but like i know off the quarry which is like right down from us we actually will see like a species of butterfly fish yeah which you had to like go down 45 feet to do so he he did it i i was able to do it i did have i had a weight belt and it was yeah. a fish that i didn't even know it does not look like it belongs in california they, they, oh, they yeah, look, it's from mexico it comes up from mexico it's yeah super cool there's yeah. a fine scale trigger fish that was inside of the the cove at one point like all these things like cardinal fish and so like i don't know it brings a whole different scope because I feel like the water, well, not I feel like, the water around Catalina is way warmer, specifically even like way compared to where Ventura rests in that, like that channel area. Right, right. So we see so much biodiversity, it's insane. That, yeah. yeah. Well, that's cool. I love it. I love it. Um, this is great. I'm super stoked you guys took the took the risk or the, what, what I know it's kind of crazy sometimes with bureaucracy and the money and stuff, but but I think it's fantastic that you guys are having these experiences. This is one of the key things that we've built our program around is, is the experiences that we create for you guys and the ones that we encourage you guys to participate with our, with our friends and colleagues. 
and uh, you know, we in ESRM really feel that the classroom is important, but so is the field experience, and and they're both important. Um, and unfortunately, folks that they go through college and don't get an opportunity to do one of these, you know, away experiences or whatever, I, I really wish that they everybody could could do this. And so um, I really love the fact that you guys took a took a leap and um, and uh, uh, are having this awesome time. And so um, I don't want to keep you guys. I mean, I could talk to you guys for hours, but but let me ask one more time. Does anybody have any other pressing questions you guys were asking about or, or, or things you're wondering about? Any logistics, any any like uh, inside inside questions or anything else you're wondering about? Do you want to have any, do you want to share any of your stories like that uh, maybe give us a taste of the pre-MPA experience or some or a fun field experience? Fun, I'm using in quote marks field experience that you had out there doing your transects and humans public you're talking to me yeah sorry uh, i'm curious about that too yeah because <laughs> <laughs> the uh, science is very much associated with your own research so it's, it's fun to hear them talk about it yeah i guess uh yeah well um let's see there's many, I could talk for hours about stories, but you know, we're trying to keep this P, you know, PG and, and <laughs> record for other people. But I would just say that, um, yeah, I mean, this is, so as these guys are talking about that, this is a fantastic place and it's, it's really wonderful. It's probably the best temperate, I think, I mean, Dr. Steele can chime in, but it's probably the best temperate marine biology lab, I think, in, in the world, certainly for like scuba diving and stuff. Uh, certainly anything associated with kelp and sort of kelp forest it's so easy to dive here so easy to get in the water as these guys mentioned they live right there they walk down they plop in the water there's a place to fill up their tanks there's warm showers there's food it's really really fan it's an incredibly uh, convenient facility um i would say i'll just say one let's see which story should I say? i'll just say one quick story which is um uh, one of the downsides is, as these guys noted, they're at two harbors, which is the place where a lot of the people that sail sailboats like to come to, um, because it's more of a, of a yachty kind of, you know, tie up to a mooring can kind of place, not so much a fancy um, uh, going to an urban type of setting. Um, and so, uh, but what that means is, and I don't know if you guys have experienced this, maybe, maybe over the holiday weekend, but, but during like 4th of July or times like that, everybody just comes on like from LA from Long Beach from you know Orange County they just got sail over and so we would always stop diving on you know on those kind of holidays even though um especially with uh 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 Dr. Steele the the old Dr. Steele um we would dive like five six dives a day most days most days of the week and everything except for these holidays we'd stop and that's because people were even though these guys were the waters they've described are in a protected area where you can't anchor and you're not supposed to do fishing and stuff and holidays it's sort of um not not the rules aren't suspended but people don't pay attention and so so <laughs> one time one of the few times i um got very angry with people was i i had one of my phd experiments was a bunch of tiles a bunch of uh, ceramic tiles erected on top uh, just suspended just off the bottom of areas at the quarry at bird rock at all these places these guys are diving and one of them i was pulling I, I came around a corner on one of these times and there was a um very overweight gentleman uh, in a very expensive uh, cigarette boat like you know i don't know half million dollar boat uh, pulled up right underneath a big sign that says, do not anchor marine protected area. He's smoking a cigar, drinking a beer, and he walks onto the top of his deck of his boat and he throws out this anchor right on top of all my ceramic tiles. And we were coming in. Is the Loper still there? Is the boat Loper? Yes, <laughs> yes it is. <laughs> I was in the Loper, which is, which is the original oh, garbage man. scow, the original place they take all the yes, garbage. Yes, they told us stuff. that. Yeah. And, uh, and so it's, it's a great boat. It's a wonderful dive platform, but it's very flat and very, it's not in the open ocean when there's waves. It's a very, it's very like lug, lug, lug. So I see this thing. I'm like, oh my God, we start trying to get close, but the boat goes very slow. And this big dude throws his thing off, starts blasting rock music. And then a bunch of kids jump off and start snorkeling in the, in the area, which is all legal. Snorkeling is legal. Uh, so the public can come in, which is great, but you're not supposed to anchor. 
And you're also, you know, not supposed to be getting drunk when you're navigating a vessel and things of that nature. And so we pull up and I um, said bad things to the guy and like, what the expletive deleted do you think you're doing? And then he yelled at me, then I yelled at him. And I said, can you not expletive read? And he's right underneath this big sign that says, like, no anchoring. And so um, um, uh, some words were, more words were said. And, and then I eventually had to free dive down to pick up his anchor off of my, some of my broken experimental tiles and then, and then bring it up to him and um, instruct him to leave the premises. <laughs> that, that, was a bo- that was a bad story. That wasn't a very good story. Um, uh, anyway, but that, that's one little quick one. I don't want to, I want to take a, okay, that's a classic boating experience is those kind of people. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, uh, I was, yeah. Many of the rules out there might've been developed because of something I did that people, were saying, <laughs> you should not do that anymore, or you're not allowed to do that anymore. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I shouldn't, I shouldn't talk about those stories cause I'm supposed to be the professor here and I'm supposed to be very safe and, and tell you guys how to do everything nicely, but yeah, it's a fantastic place. I really encourage you guys all to go. If, if for some reason you, you're, you're not going to be able to do this uh, Catalina experience, uh, just like these guys said, there there are um, whereas our Channel Islands are much less developed, many fewer people. If people go to any Channel Islands, our data, our long-term data that our coastal management students have been collecting for years and years, show if anybody's been to any Channel Island, it's Catalina by far. Like like fifty six percent of people that have been to any Channel Islands have been have been to Catalina. And then it's it's our, our northern Channel Islands come after that. So it's much easier to get to than than Santa Cruz or Santa Rosa. Very fast to get there. Um, there's multiple, uh, uh, especially in the summer, there's multiple ferries um, from multiple ports each day. So even if you can't get out there to do the class, it's a wonderful even just day trip to go out and check it out. And one of the things I used to do there to make money is I used to also um, teach people to snorkel and scuba dive and things uh, out at uh, around Wrigley, but also around Avalon. So it's a really easy place to get to, super fun. And so if you guys can't go out for the class, I really recommend you guys going out just for a day trip. Um, and in fact, it might be a wonderful thing to go out, you know, reach out to these guys, go out on the weekend and check them out this, this semester when you know you have some fellow CSU friends out there. Uh, go out and, and check it out. It's 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 a fantastic facility. It really, yeah. uh, like I said, it's top in the world. It's it's a fantastic thing, and we're very lucky to be able to have this um, a place that we can uh, use for our classes and teaching. Yeah, I highly suggest if you have any, if it sounds interesting at all, explore it. If you want to do it, chase it. I felt like there was a little bit of um, hoops that I had to jump through to kind of make this happen and make you know get the AAUS and get the MOTC. But everything came together and I'm I'm so glad. It's, it's it was absolutely worth it and I would do it again in a heartbeat. Awesome. Awesome. All right, any one last round if anybody wants to ask these guys any any last uh questions or last things you're wondering about? All right. Well, with that, I'd ask everybody to just quickly unmute and give these guys a hand. That was fantastic. Thanks for being our first do drop uh, do drop in you guys and Andrew threw his uh, contact info and and if you guys are okay, I'm happy to pass on their contact info if you guys want to ask them other questions um, uh, throughout the semester. Um, but super awesome. Yeah. Thanks you guys. This was great. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll kill the recording now, but um, if people want to hang out for a minute or two and ask more questions, that's awesome. Uh, consider applying uh, next week. Uh, consider coming to our next do drop in. We're going to have Harry Shearer on talking about um, uh the in the wake of hurricane katrina some of the coastal management things that have gone on in new orleans so harry's a great friend of ours he's always been very kind to us over the years and 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 talk with you guys so um consider coming next week same time also on zoom and looking forward to seeing everybody and other than that i will say have a great night and have a fantastic semester you guys awesome thank you so much stoked to do it